state prosecutors in Minnesota announced today they will not file charges against a Minneapolis police officer who fatally shot Amir Locke while executing a no-knock warrant in February. The officer fired just seconds after the SWAT team went inside. Prosecutors said Locke was holding a gun when he was killed. We're standing by to speak with Amir Locke's mother, but first, Alex Perez reports from Minneapolis. Tonight, prosecutors say no criminal charges will be filed against the Minneapolis SWAT team officer who shot and killed a 22-year-old Amir Locke during this early morning no-knock raid. You don't want to put anybody on trial for a case simply to meet um, public demand. It has to be a it has to be a, a ethical consideration based on prosecutorial ethics. Authorities say police body camera video shows Locke raised his handgun in Officer Mark Hanneman's direction moments before Hanneman shot him. Although his finger was not on the trigger, um, that gun was pointed directly at Officer Hanneman. That portion of the video has not yet been released. The ordeal unfolding in less than 10 seconds. A police body camera video shows officers using a key to quietly enter the apartment, then announcing themselves. Locke on the couch at his cousin's apartment under a blanket appears to be woken up by the commotion when he's seen with a gun in hand. Hanneman fires three shots. The warrant related to a separate murder case. Locke was not a suspect, nor was he named in the warrant. His family says he legally owned his gun. His heartbroken mother tonight outraged the officer who killed him won't be charged. The spirit of my baby is going to hunt you for the rest of your life. Wow. Hmm. I am not disappointed. I am disgusted with the city of Minneapolis. Yeah, Stephanie, prosecutors did express today sympathy to the Locke family, but they say the officer acted lawfully and any charges simply would not hold in court. The mayor here, by the way, has instituted a permanent ban on no-knock warrants. That becomes effective on Friday. Stephanie? For more now, let's bring in Amir Locke's mother, Karen Wells, and the family attorney, Ben Crump. Thank you so much for joining us. Karen, let's start with you. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison spoke with you before the state made the announcement today that they wouldn't press any charges against that officer that shot your son. Tell us, how did that conversation go? Well, he basically explained to us that they were not going to bring charges uh, against the police officer. I listened to him, I responded back and I told him now that he's done his job as Amir's mother, I'm about to do my job. And I reiterated to him that I was not disappointed, I was disgusted with the decision. And Karen, first and foremost, we want to express our sincere condolences for the loss of your son. I can, can't even imagine that pain. but. Karen, you've vowed to keep fighting this decision. You want no-knock warrants banned in Minnesota in the name of your son. What is your message for public officials in the state tonight who have a say in making that happen? I believe that no matter what party line you're on or no matter if your seat is up for re-election, that my son was a human being. He was also a resident of the Twin Cities. He was born and raised in Minnesota. And I feel that in order for us to all across the party lines, we need to come together and realize that no-knock warrants are not good for the police officers. They're not good for my son. They're not good for anybody else because in the end, it doesn't do anything. It, it brings uh, harm. It brings uh, death, which is what happened with my son. So, you know, right now, I believe that no-knock warrants should be banned across the state of, of Minnesota, and it should be brought in the name of my son, Amir Locke. And a policy so many have been fighting for so long. Mr. Crump, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us, and, and it's good to see you, unfortunately, under these circumstances again. But from a legal standpoint, A.G. Ellison says there was insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer violated any legal elements governing when police can use deadly force. Do you believe the A.G. worked in good faith and the laws currently on the books ultimately prevented him from bringing charges here? Well, I want to believe that he did everything he can do. As Karen and Andre, the parents of Amir, said, 
they did their job, what they thought they had to do. Now we're going to do what we feel we have to do to try to expose the hypocrisy and the injustice of these no-not warrants that are disproportionately executed against African Americans as if we don't have a right to the Fourth Amendment. And then, once you bust in our doors in the wee hours of the morning, you don't expect us to have a right to the Second Amendment either. They said it was a life or death situation. Well, it was a life or death situation created by the police, created by bad policy. We shouldn't have this no not warrant law because it is foreseeable that it's going to be a danger to the police or it's going to be a danger to innocent citizens like Karen and Andre's baby boy. And Mr. Crump, I understand you want the Justice Department to review this case. Do you think they will? Well, I think they will because not only the specific instances of this case, but they need to review the pattern and practice of this uh, signing no-not warrants. Is it disproportionately against African Americans. We saw the Breonna Taylor was killed in Louisville, Kentucky, and they looked at who these deadly no-not warrants were being executed against, and they found, Stephanie, that 82 percent of the time they were knocking in African American doors. They were not doing this to our white brothers and sisters. And so until we can have it where it is done equally, and justly, then the Department of Justice needs to review everything that Minneapolis has done in executing these warrants. And we'll be watching to see if they do. Now, Karen, before you go, we know that in the past you've said that uh, Amir was, ha had a, a legal uh, permit to carry a weapon because he wanted to defend himself in a city that has seen so much crime in the last couple of years. But before you go, tell us about Amir, who he was and what he cared about. Amir was, had a beautiful spirit. He had a beautiful smile. He was my baby boy. Uh, Amir, at, at the age of 22, wanted to be a, going, you know, like follow entrepreneurship. So he did DoorDash. Um, he did Instacart. And then he also, I helped him uh, get his LLC. He started his own business. And he was really focused on, um, he was already musically inclined because of his father. So they had a natural talent. And he was just ready to go into like real estate, music, saving the youth. He was really big on that. I mean, he really talked about wanting to start a clothing line that catered to the, the youth and then working with my relatives as well in my hometown state. So we were really looking forward to reuniting back with each other and making plans to start doing the things and reaching the goals that Amir wanted to do. And he was a beautiful, spirited person. I, if you can interview over 50 people, 50 people would say that they loved him and they wouldn't have anything bad to say about him. He was a, he was a beautiful soul. Karen, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we wish you all the best. And again, our sincerest condolences to you and your family. And Mr. Crump, thank you so much for joining us as well. Be well, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.